Carol is inside an empty store, desperately searching for any medicine or energy drink to keep herself awake. Outside, dangerous forces are relentlessly banging on a door, trying to reach her. This chaotic situation began a few days ago when a space shuttle exploded while returning to Earth, scattering its pieces across several states in the USA. The media quickly labeled it as an alien invasion, causing widespread panic. Despite the fear, opportunists emerged, selling salvaged debris on eBay. Tucker, the head of the Center for Disease Control, arrives at one of the crash sites for inspection. He discovers that a piece of debris is contaminated with a mysterious organism capable of withstanding high levels of radiation and multiplying rapidly. It becomes evident that this organism is from another planet. Unknowingly, Tucker touches a small piece of debris and receives a cut on his finger. Ignoring the incident, he goes home and experiences strange symptoms, including excessive sweating and intense cellular condensation on his face. Meanwhile, Carol, Tucker's ex-wife, is awakened by her son Oliver's screams from a nightmare. Concerned, she rushes to his room to comfort him. The next day, Carol drops Oliver off at school and heads to her office as a psychiatrist. On her way, she meets her friend Ben, who reveals that the government is hiding something significant, as all the researchers at the crash site have resigned. Carol vents her frustrations about Tucker's odd behavior and sudden desire to see their son after being absent for four years. At her office, Carol's first patient, Wendy, shares that her husband has been acting strangely. He killed their dog without showing any emotion, leaving Wendy deeply disturbed. Carol prescribes medication for Wendy but senses that something is amiss. Later, Carol takes her son and neighbor's children trick or treating. They encounter a house where the family dog behaves aggressively, attacking one of the boys. Surprisingly, the boy remains unaffected and even restrains the dog. Back at Carol's home, Oliver screams, and Carol discovers a strange piece of flesh protruding from his hand, which he obtained from the candy. Alarmed, Carol takes the flesh to Ben, who shares it with his scientist friend Stephen for analysis. Meanwhile, a mysterious virus spreads rapidly across the country, causing numerous deaths. In an emergency meeting, Tucker explains that the virus will lead the country into recession if left unchecked. He proposes an inoculation program as the only solution. Unbeknownst to the public, infected waiters contaminate food and drinks. Carol witnesses a homeless man having a seizure on the streets but receives help, unlike a terrified woman she encounters earlier. At her office, Carol is shocked to find Wendy's emotionless husband, who refuses to leave until he sees his wife. Carol warns Wendy and prevents her from entering the building. That night, Carol reluctantly allows Oliver to spend time with Tucker. On their way, a terrified woman appears in the middle of the road, pleading for help. Before she can explain further, she is struck by a car driven by an emotionless individual. Carol wants to testify against the driver but is dismissed by the police. Carol drops Oliver off at Tucker's place, noticing his lack of emotion. Later, she attends a party with Ben, where they engage in a philosophical conversation with diplomat Belisk, his wife Lidmilla, and Dr. Yorosh. After the party, Ben tries to kiss Carol, but she stops it to preserve their friendship. Back home, Carol receives a visit from a man claiming to be from the census department, but she suspects something is amiss. A struggle ensues, and Carol manages to lock the door. Meanwhile, Oliver plays with his friend Jean, who also notices his father's strange behavior. The next morning, Carol observes people on the streets with vacant stares, as if their souls have been taken. At her office, she discovers that all her clients have canceled their appointments. Carol realizes that the virus is controlling people and begins researching it online. When Carol arrives at her office, she is shocked to discover that all her clients have canceled their appointments for the day. She tries to call Wendy, but Wendy's husband answers and assures Carol that everything is fine. This leads Carol to reflect on the strange behavior she has been witnessing and she realizes that the virus is controlling people. As she starts researching more about the virus online, 
her secretary startles her by offering her some tea. Before she can drink it, Carol receives a call from Ben, who informs her that the test results for the unusual skin patch are ready. Carol immediately goes to the lab, where Stephen explains that the skin sample is composed of molecular spores that take over the human brain during sleep and alter the genetic code, making a person unstable. In order to prevent the deadly infection, they are instructed not to sleep until a cure is found. At that moment, Livmilla calls Ben to inform him that Yorish has been acting strangely. This prompts the trio to rush to Yorish's house, where they encounter long lines of people waiting to get vaccinated against the new virus. When they reach Yorish's house, they find him in bed undergoing a grotesque transformation. Carol attempts to take a picture, but Yorish suddenly wakes up and attacks her. Ben quickly intervenes, pushing Yorish away, causing him to crawl away, vomit a strange liquid, and die. Concerned about her son's potential exposure to the virus, Carol rushes to Tucker's house to pick up Oliver. However, when she arrives, she finds Tucker in a meeting with his associates and immediately inquires about her son. Tucker claims that Oliver is playing with jeans, but Carol is skeptical and begins searching the house for Oliver. During her search, the men from the meeting surround Carol, causing her to panic and attempt to escape. Tucker tackles her to the ground and tries to infect her with his saliva, but Carol manages to push him away and flee through the back door. She tries to seek help from her neighbors, but they are also infected. Carol reaches her car, only to find the road blocked on all sides, resulting in a crash. As she exits her car, she is pursued by a group of infected people. She runs to the main avenue and tries to ask for help, but everyone ignores her. In desperation, she enters a subway station. Carol boards a train filled with passengers who all have blank expressions. She receives a message from Oliver, pleading for her to save him from Tucker, who has hidden him somewhere. This pushes Carol to the brink of a breakdown. One of the passengers reveals that he is not infected and advises Carol to act emotionless in order to avoid detection by the infected. Suddenly, a group of infected people enters the train car, prompting Carol and the other uninfected passengers to run to the end of the train and close the door. The infected individuals press the emergency button to stop the train and attempt to break down the door to infect the passengers. Carol opens the back door and jumps off the train, escaping through the tunnel until she reaches a locker room in a station. There, she finds a guard's gun. When the guard approaches her, she accidentally shoots him out of fear. Terrified, Carol drops the gun and makes her way through the station, pretending to be infected. She encounters some cops who are capturing uninfected citizens to force them to take the vaccine, which is actually a ploy by Tucker to spread the virus. An observant cop notices the sweat on Carol's face and warns her to leave quickly, as the sweat would give her away. Carol walks away and bumps into her neighbor, who offers her the vaccine. Carol's acting convinces her neighbor that she has already been vaccinated. Carol then goes to Tucker's house, only to find it empty. She leaves a message for Oliver before venturing out again. She comes across a crowd of people watching a couple commit suicide. Carol refrains from reacting and continues on until she reaches the Belazek mansion, where Ben and Stephen are still conducting tests. After some discussion, Ben agrees to help Carol find her son, while Stephen and his assistant prepare to travel to Fort Dietrich in Maryland to search for a cure. They decide to stay awake, fearing that they may have been infected if they fall asleep. At that moment, Belazek returns and Ludmil greets him with a hug. However, Belazek is infected and concerned about potential intruders, so he allows a group of guards to enter. Carol and the others witness this on the security cameras and escape through the back door. Once on the streets, they witness Wendy being forcefully taken away by infected cops. Wendy fights back, insisting that she has slept but remains unaffected, but the cops subdue her anyway. The group splits up, and Carol and Ben discuss Wendy's words, deducing that she has developed immunity to the virus. They come across a dead cop and steal his car to go to Carol's office, where they search through Wendy's medical profile. 
Ben discovers that Wendy had a brain illness called encephalitis, which explains her immunity. The virus tends to target healthy brains in order to feed and multiply. Ben calls Stephen at the lab to share this new information, while Carol receives another text from Oliver, revealing that he is being held at his grandmother's house in Baltimore. Carol confesses to Ben that she has already been infected with the virus, but Ben assures her that everything will be okay. Ben drives recklessly to the city, evading blocked roads until he is forced to let Carol go so that the police will chase him instead. Carol continues on foot and encounters a cop who stops her. She presents her ID with a poker face and is allowed to leave. Eventually, Carol reaches the train station and boards a train to Baltimore, where she hides in the bathroom. The lack of sleep begins to take its toll on her, and she starts experiencing hallucinations, including seeing a second self in the mirror that wants to attack her. She wakes up just in time and washes away a piece of strange flesh before opening the door to find Jean, who explains that he has lost his family and now considers himself part of Carol's family. He repeatedly urges her to sleep, but Carol pretends that she will do so in private. When the train arrives in Baltimore, Jean becomes suspicious upon finding Carol removing more flesh pieces from her body. Tucker arrives to escort Carol and Jean to his mother's house, believing Carol's emotionless act. Oliver is not present, but Carol continues to play her part around Tucker's family. When she receives a call from Ben, she speaks in code, pretending it is her secretary. When Tucker leaves for work, Carol seizes the opportunity to search the house and finally finds Oliver in a room. They hesitate at first, but after Carol says a few emotional words to confirm that she is fine, they embrace. Oliver reveals that he has been sleeping every day but has not transformed, realizing that his medication for his sleeping disorder has made him immune. Jean suddenly catches them in the act, but Carol easily pushes him away and quickly escapes with her son. Tucker spots them through the window and immediately gives chase, leading to a pursuit through the streets. They find refuge in an abandoned warehouse with a broken window, but Tucker follows them inside. While he goes on a monologue, Carol attempts to sneak towards the door, but Tucker catches her from behind and tries to incapacitate her. Oliver intervenes and strikes his father with a metal tool, causing Tucker to capture him instead. This gives Carol the opportunity to strike Tucker on the head, knocking him out and allowing them to escape. Afterwards, Carol and Oliver seek shelter in an empty department store. Carol searches the medicine section and discovers an injection, which she shows to Oliver. She explains that if she ever falls asleep, she wants him to inject her heart with it. They then search for food, and Carol receives a call from Ben, who learns their location and promises to pick them up soon. While Carol is occupied with the call, Oliver approaches a door with blood splattered nearby, but Carol stops him from opening it. Instead, she investigates and finds several people on the ground undergoing the transformation, including a police officer. Carol cautiously approaches the officer to retrieve his gun before rushing outside and locking the door, warning Oliver to stay away from it. Hours pass as they wait for Ben, and while Oliver sleeps, Carol desperately searches for anything to keep herself awake. Unfortunately, her efforts are in vain, and Carol eventually falls asleep. The infected people inside the room awaken and begin pounding on the door, trying to escape. The noise wakes Oliver, who discovers his mother asleep. He quickly injects her with a syringe, which wakes her up and halts the transformation just in time. Carol cleans the strange flesh off her face and exits the bathroom, only to find that Ben has finally arrived. She rushes to hug him, but soon realizes that he has also been infected. Carol backs away as Ben invites her to join a new society free of crime, hate, and discrimination. Terrified, Carol points her gun at him, but Ben opens the door and releases the other infected people, mentioning their disdain for immunity as he points at Oliver. The group attempts to capture Oliver, prompting Carol to rapidly shoot and kill them one by one. However, she cannot bring herself to kill Ben, so she shoots him in the leg and flees with Oliver. Outside, they take Ben's car to escape. 
Carol receives a call from Stephen, who provides an address where a helicopter will be waiting for them. As they reach the main street, they find themselves surrounded by cars and Carol crashes, losing consciousness. The car is now surrounded by infected people, but Oliver locks the doors and shakes Carol until she wakes up. A man manages to break a window, but Carol accelerates and pushes the people away to escape. Some infected individuals cling to the car's roof, so Carol drives recklessly and intentionally hits objects to make them fall off. Police cars also collide with hers until she crashes, sending the remaining attackers flying against a shop window. Fortunately, the car remains intact, and Carol continues driving while receiving directions from Stephen over the phone. An infected man throws a Molotov cocktail at the car, but Carol persists, driving with the vehicle on fire until they reach the parking lot of the correct building. The car crashes into a pillar, prompting Carol and Oliver to exit and run to the elevator, where they narrowly evade their pursuers. They manage to reach the roof, where Stephen and his army comrades rescue them in a helicopter. Sometime later, scientists outside the USA successfully develop a vaccine, leading to the eradication of the alien virus worldwide and the restoration of normal life. As the main scientist behind the vaccine, Stephen explains to the press that vaccinated individuals will have no recollection of the previous events. Meanwhile, Carol has adopted Jean and is now in a relationship with Ben. As the boys leave for school, Ben reads the newspaper and comments on the violent crimes committed by people, causing Carol to contemplate the alien's offer of peace. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.